in a young democracy like India, whenever you look at young population which works specifically in services industry, and if you look at them, they are 19-year-old kids, they are 20-year-old kids, they are 21-year-old kids, they are 22-years-old kids. When you look at their hands, and if you see what they do with their hands, somewhere, if there is a conscious inside an engineer, it will challenge him to build machines, and those machines should be intelligent machines. We have tried to build robots which are easy to manufacture, easy to build, so that we can seriously challenge definition of employment. Idea is to create more employment by extending the value chain so that people don't punch four or five keys, they don't do repetable activities, six or seven of them every day. Because if they continue to do that, then only thing which will happen when they are in their mid thirties, they are going to get arthritis in their hand and muscle memory. Hence, we are robotics engineers, we are designing robots, we are designing affordable robots for all kinds of work, for all kinds of industry. This is just one example. This has been built by four engineers. It has been designed, one of the youngest democracies. Everything has been locally manufactured, everything has been locally fabricated. Each code, each line of code has been locally written. Idea is to build a robot which has got a flexible chases. That means I can use this particular chases in all kinds of terrains. I can use the movement and the power of movement for a healthcare industry, a movement in a restaurant, movement within an aircraft, movement outside an aircraft, a movement in a hospital, movement in the aisles of hospital, moving in a manufacturing plant, almost everywhere with people, without people. We have created hand and the movements of hand of robot in such a way that various aspects of fingers can be used. A nurse, a hands of nurse can be um, duplicated so that medicine can be given to a patient. A door can be opened. A restaurant uh, a robot can take um, dishes from on, on the tray from a chef and it can distribute to a designated table. These are simple mundane tasks. Important but mundane. An idea is to use robotics in the realms of redefining employment. The second aspect is the cognitive aspect. While structural part, which is a movement of hands, movement of eyes, movement of arms, movement of elbows, movement of figures, movement of feet, movement, rotation of body, all these are similar for different domains uh, or industrial domains. The cognitive part is different. Cognitive part is based on a complex and complex and cognitively learning based algorithms. Now let's try to understand how these algorithms are different. These algorithms adapt themselves based upon the environment in which this particular machine works. So if this particular robot is being used within an aircraft, it will understand the environment and attributes of an aircraft and activities within that and that's how the learning happens. Both the learning in terms of response to a stimuli, also learning in terms of response to humans. The second aspect or second example is if this particular same robot with the same or similar algorithm is basically put in a hospital, then it is different. The learning is different, hence response is different. While structurally it remains same, movements remain same, but outcomes are different and so and so forth. If it is used to serve 
passengers within an aircraft, it works and it learns in a different way. If it is used to serve patients and help nurses to serve patients, then it works in a different way. If it is put in, on the in the reception of a hospital, then it learns different way. It navigates in a different way. And that's the cognitive aspect of it. Both the cognitive and structural are highly, highly accurate in this, in this particular machine. So it's one way of telling that this attempt is successful because the accuracy to response to most stimuli or most activities or most humans is in the realms of over 90%. That means if you basically say that, hey, for this particular patient, I have to give this particular medicine at this particular time, it will be accurately done. Or if for this particular table, this food from this menu, which has been ordered, has to be served within this stipulated time, it will be served on time with same freshness. This is another attempt to ensure that a universal language appears between machines and humans. Machines become one of the most critical element of progress of human race. And employment carries a meaning, carries a meaning with an attributes of creativity, sense of belonging, and pride, and a real pride. And employment doesn't become a constraint, just a simple constraint to ensure that there's a food on the table and there's a roof on the head. This definition may have worked for the previous industrial ages in the new industrial age which has to come, which would be combination of machines, IOTs, sensor, AI, all kinds of machine learning. The new definition will be that I'm a creative person, I can design things, I can build things, and I will do which I want to do, things which I was born to do. And that's the basic philosophy in execution of this particular machine.